Hello and welcome. Please pause the video and try this problem on your own. Let's start by reading the problem. It says the zeros of this function, f of x, I like to rewrite the problem as I read it, equals x plus 2 squared minus 25. The zeros of this function are which of the following? Now remember that here what we're dealing with because we're squaring x, I'll draw my x and y axis, right? The graph of, the, of this function, because we're squaring x, is some type of parabola, shaped like this, a smile or a frown, upside down frown. And the parabolas we're dealing with here are going to have what are called roots or zeros of a function. They're, they're typically called roots or zeros because zeros because the height of your parabola is zero here. If height is where you are on the y-axis, right, up or down from, from the zero level here, right, these two points are on the height y equals zero, so they're called zeros. And it doesn't mean your x's are zeros, it means your y's are zeros. y is your output, or your f of x, right, zero. So we say this is our height, our output is zero. You can think of output and height as the same thing. And we're trying to find the values of x that give a height of zero, because you know even in this little sketch I made right here, this point, whatever it is, x is something to the left of the origin, and x over here is something to the right of the, of the origin. Your root can be the origin itself. It looks something like this, with our x and y axis, maybe like this, right? Or this pink function right here, or any version where this origin is also your vertex. The vertex is the turning point in the graph. So it's possible to have only one root uh, at zero, or really one root anywhere, as long as your vertex, right, like this parabola, the vertex is the point touching the uh, x-axis, where the height's zero. Let's see what happens here. So what x values with x plus 2 squared minus 25 would give us a height of zero? To begin solving this, I usually distribute if I can. So we have x plus 2 squared, that means x plus 2 times x plus 2, we're taking 25 away, equals 0. If I set this, uh, set this up and distribute, I have x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. And then minus 25, don't want to lose that. Okay, let's keep going. So here, if I simplify this, I get x squared plus 4x. And then 4 minus 25 is negative 21. All right, we have this equal to 0, the height is 0 at the roots. Now we can factor this. And if we can't factor it, we can use completing the square or the quadratic equation, um, which are really the same thing. But I think we can factor this. We need factors of negative 21 that sum to 4. So what factors of negative 21 add to 4? Well, I know 7 times 3 is 21, and they're 4 apart. In order to get a negative product, negative 21, either 7 or 3 need to be negative. But remember, it has to add to a positive 4. So that means the 3, the, small, the number with the smaller absolute value needs to be negative, and 7 needs to be positive, right? Because 7, positive 7, plus negative 3 is positive 4. If I did it the other way around, you would get negative 4. So now it's saying what x value is would give us 0. Well, think about this. We have one number times another, and the product is zero. So if we think about, let's call this A and B, our product is zero. This is where the zero product property really is useful. The zero product property. Okay, so the zero product property says, if you, know, if you have two or more numbers, so let's say we have two numbers in this case, A times B is, and we know the result, the product is zero, that means either A, or B, or both of them, need to equal zero, right? If A is zero and B is not, it doesn't matter because zero times anything is zero. If B is zero and A is not, the product would still be zero. If they're both zero, the product is zero. So to solve this, to find out what X actually equals, we can say A, or X minus three, equals zero, or X plus seven equals zero, or both do. So to figure this out, we solve for X. Take 7 from both sides, and x is negative 7. That's one case. 
So one of the zeros, the roots, is the point negative 7 for x and 0, height for the y. In the other case, we add 3 to both sides, and x equals 3. So the other point, the other root, is 3 comma 0. Now they only want the, the zeros, they only want the x values. That's 3 and negative 7. And you can see those are just the opposites of these terms right here, because opposites add to 0, and that would give us, sorry, a number that's 0. So 3 and negative 7, let's scroll up, that's our answer. Let's find that, 3 and negative 7, choice 4. All right, hope that helps.